Uh, the first one I'm going to introduce is our U.S. Congressman, Representative Bill Foster. Thank you so much, and, and thank you especially those of you that, that went to the effort to set this up. Um, I'm, my name is Bill Foster. Um, I am a scientist and a businessman, and I represent you in Washington, D.C. Um, I the area I represent is the Illinois 14th District, which is mostly Kane and Kendall County. There's a little piece of DuPage County. Then it goes uh, out to the Mississippi River. There's Lee County, Bureau, Henry, and so on. A little piece of Whiteside. Um, but, so it's a, um, it's a very diverse district. It really has little pieces of everything in the United States. Um, there's everything from you know, almost inner city type situations in Aurora and Elgin to you know, corn farmers out west. Um, I guess I'm, I'm one of those rare Democrats that has actually been endorsed by the Farm Bureau. Which is, um, you know, which is something I'm actually very proud of. Um, I think it, it's because you know, I'm a scientist. Um, for 20 years, 23 years, I worked at Fermi Lab, Fermi National Accelerator Lab um, in Batavia. That's where I raised my family. Um, I have a, a son and a daughter. My, my daughter just graduated from college, and she had, from Stanford University, actually. And she, is, um, she has a job, and she has a boyfriend, and her boyfriend has a job. <laughs> so, this is my, my son unfortunately did not come out as, as well. My, my son graduated with a degree in mathematics and computer science from the University of Wisconsin and had a wonderful job doing medical imaging for a, doing software for a medical imaging firm. Um, but then unfortunately about a year and a half ago he informed us that he was going to, going to go back to law school. And so this tells you that really, no matter how hard you, you try to teach your children right from wrong, there's some <laughs> chance of going up as lawyers. <laughs> but um, I'm also a businessman. Um, when I was 19 years old, my little brother and I started a company in our basement. And that company is a manufacturing company that makes about 70% of all the theater lighting equipment in the United States. And that's something I'm very proud of. It, it provides hundreds of good manufacturing jobs in the, right here in the Midwest, and we've kept all those jobs in the Midwest. And that's one of the things that I feel most strongly about, is maintaining the health of United States manufacturing. Um, this is not really, it should not be a, a partisan issue, because for 30 years, from 1970 until early 1991, um, there were, was very constant manufacturing in the United States. We had about between 17 and 18 million manufacturing jobs in good times and bad, and when the Democrats, Republicans were in charge, it was 17 or 18 million jobs. And then in, two, in early 2001, it, we just fell off a cliff, and we've lost about one-third of the manufacturing jobs in the United States. And this is something we have to reverse. Um, it is, um, it's a very serious situation. Um, I, I think often of, um, it was, I believe, General Yamamoto, the guy who designed the Pearl Harbor attack. And when he was told that he was to, um, that, you know, that he was to design the Pearl Harbor attack, he said, okay, we can do it, and if we're lucky, we will, you know, catch the U.S. off guard um, and destroy a good part of the Pacific Fleet, which they did. But he also said at the same time that if we do this, we will lose the war because he knew of the American factories, and he had seen the American factories, and he knew that, that the United States would, um, would raise itself from its slumber and, and win the war. And that's what happened. Um, the problem is today, if you ask where are those factories, they're in China, uh, they're in India. And that's not, that's not okay with me. It's one of the strongest reasons that I ran for the, the U.S. Congress is because we have to do something about manufacturing. You know, I love manufacturing. I, I spent the first half of my career in it, um, and I visit manufacturing um, areas all over, manufacturing sites all over this district, um, partly because I really love the equipment, you know, love the manufacturing lines, and, um, but, but also to, to check on their pulse and ask them what the competitive situation is. And it's very interesting. You know, we are, the biggest single problem for U.S. manufacturing is just the Chinese imports. Frankly, if you go to Walmart, you know, almost everything you see is made in Singapore, made in China. And, and the reason for this, the single biggest reason, is that the Chinese manipulate their currency. 
Um, if you ask the experts, if China would just let free market principles determine the value of their currency, everything from China would cost about one and a half times more than it does. And when I talk to factories around the 14th district and say, you know, how would, how would it be competing against Chinese imports that cost one and a half times more? They say, no problem, you know, that's, you know, they do just fine. And, and so we have to, you know, stop this abuse of Chinese currency manipulation. It's very, very high on my list. Um, and, and also, another thing I feel very strongly about is education. You know, I've, you know, one of my frustrations in Congress is that, is that, you know, it's all about, for most career politicians, it's always about the next election. You know, if something, something doesn't provide an advantage for the next election in the next two years, they're not interested in it. But if you look at things like education, or things like basic scientific research, the payoff for that comes not two years from now, not in the next election, but decades later. And so I think it causes us to underinvest in long-term, long-term things. And, and that's one of the things I, I think about all the time in Congress, when I, before I cast my votes. Um, I actually, because of the way I cast my votes, um, I guess I've been labeled the second most centrist member of Congress. Now, there's an organization that ranks everyone from how far left you are to how far right you are. And I'm dead smack in the middle, one off dead center, out of 435 members. And it's something I'm very, very um, comfortable with. I think sometimes it's, um, you know, what it means to be the most centrist member of Congress is that it means your right ear and your left ear are going deaf at the same rate from people yelling at it. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, so I, you know, I actually, I, I'm comfortable with that. And, and when you look at really tough problems, you know, things like immigration, which we need a solution for, it's gonna be people in the middle that are sitting there hammering out a workable solution. Um, and, and I intend to be one of those, and, um, and that's really as much as anything why I've, why I've decided, you know, after a long career in, in business and a long career in science to um, spend part of my life in service to my fellow man and in service to all the, the everyone in the Illinois 14th District. So. I'll be happy to answer your questions. I think I've gone over my five minutes here. <laughs> Thank you.